Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, and this is a step-by-step -step approach of undergrade dissection and reentry. The information here is included on Chapter 5 of the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. The first part of uh, understanding undergrade and dissection reentry is to understand the terminology. And as the name implies, dissection and reentry consists of two parts, the dissection and the reentry. The dissection in the undergrade direction can happen with a knuckle wire or with a crossbow catheter, whereas in the retrograde direction it's only with a knuckle wire. Reentry in the retrograde direction is done in most cases using reverse card, but in the undergrade direction there are many techniques, of which currently the stingray is the one mainly used. The star was the original technique in which a guide wire was advanced in an angled format until it spontaneously re-entered the distal lumen. A variation of this was the contrast-guided star, or the Carlino technique, that is now evolved into a technique injecting a very small amount of contrast. The mini star and the last are wire-based re-entry techniques that are not very commonly done right now. And once again, the stingray is the technique that is most commonly used for re-entering into the distal true lumen. We'll first start discussing about the crossbows, then the knuckle wire, stingray, and non-stingray re-entry. When should the crossbows catheter be used? According to the hybrid algorithm, undergrade approach is chosen if there is a clear proximal cap and a good distal uh, target. If the lesion is uh, less than 20 millimeters, undergrade wire escalation is performed, whereas if it's more than 20 millimeters, then ADR is performed. A subgroup that has evolved as particularly advantageous for using the crossbow catheter is those of instant restenosis because the stent acts as a barrier for the crossbow to keep it inside the true lumen. This is how the crossbow uh, technique is done. The first part is to advance a workhorse guide wire to the proximal cap. Then the crossbow catheter is advanced over this guide wire. Then the guide wire is withdrawn inside the crossbow catheter. This is probably the only device that is advanced by pushing not over a guide wire. The next step is to secure the torquing device approximately two to three finger breaths from the TUI. The reason is that if the crossbow jumps, the torquing device provides a stop that does not allow the device to go very far distally, potentially causing a perforation. The next step is to spin the device very quickly in either direction is fine. And uh, what happens is um, uh, in a quantum way, the crossbows may do nothing for a few seconds and then all of a sudden jump and go into various locations. So once there is movement of uh, the crossbow catheter, the next step is to understand where the crossbow catheter has gone. One possibility is that it doesn't move but stays uh, behind the proximal cap. The second is that it enters a side branch. The third is that it stops inside uh, the occlusion. The fourth, it goes subintimally distal, distal to the distal cap. And the fifth is that it enters into the distal true lumen. A key part of doing any sort of undergrade dissection reentry is to protect against the extending the dissection. And one way to do this is to disconnect the injection syringe from the manifold to avoid accidental injection of contrast into the subintimal space. So the first scenario is that uh, the crossbows cannot penetrate through the proximal cap. Usually that is because there is calcification or um, a severe um, hardening of the proximal cap. The solutions are to increase the guide catheter support, to puncture the proximal cap with a stiff wire, or to switch to a guide wire escalation technique. The second scenario is when the crossbow enters into a side branch, and the way around this is to do knuckle wire redirection or redirect using a stiff guide wire going into the occlusion. This often requires uh, viewing into orthogonal views, for example, LAO and RAO for the right coronary artery. This is an example of the crossbow catheter advanced into the right coronary artery and then going into one of the acute marginal branches instead of following into the distal RCA and the posterior lateral vessel. After using a knuckled guide wire, now the crossbows can be redirected into the right posterior lateral branch. The third option is that the crossbow partially crosses but stays within the occlusion. 
and uh, the way to make progress is to advance a knuckled guide wire or to switch once again to guide wire escalation technique. The fourth scenario is uh, crossing into the subintimal space distal to the distal cap and this is actually the intended part of the cross pose and the next step here is to re-enter which is done in the majority of cases using the stingray system. The fifth possibility, which happened in approximately a third of the cases in the fast CTOs trial and about a quarter of the cases in the crossbow's first trial, is to enter into the distal true lumen. Before doing anything, one has to confirm that indeed we have entered the distal true lumen, and this can be done by doing orthogonal views or, if there is still uncertainty, by taking a workhorse guide wire and uh, ensuring that the guide wire advances smoothly into the distal true lumen. This is an example of an Austral right coronary CTO. The cross post catheter was advanced, the guide wire was advanced, um, but there was still some question as to whether the guide wire was within the distal true lumen. In this particular case, intravascular ultrasound was done, and this was very valuable because it does demonstrate that distal true lumen is actually here, and uh, the guide wire and the IVUS in this particular case is into the subintimal space. So confirming that our guide wire is into the distal true lumen is critical before um, um, putting balloons and stents. Changing gear now into the undergrade dissection reentry using a knuckle guide wire. This uh, can be done, for example, when there is subintimal guide wire position and a long occlusion when there are many side branches that one wants to avoid getting into, and can even be done in cases where there's ambiguous proximal cap. These are the so-called move the cap techniques in which uh, a knuckled guide wire is used to resolve the ambiguity and enable crossing into the distal true lumen. The, there are advantages and disadvantages using a knuckled wire versus a cross boss. The cross boss creates a smaller force lumen than the knuckled guide wire but the knuckled guide wire can be more useful for avoiding side branches. To knuckle, one needs two things. One is a microcatheter that provides the support necessary for creating the knuckle and advancing the knuckle, and also exchange for another guide wire. And a guide wire, which is a polymer jacketed guide wire. The most commonly used are the Fielder XT, the Fighter, and the Pilot 200. The Filter XT and the Fighter form tighter knuckles because they're softer, whereas the Pilot forms a little larger knuckles. This is the Filter XT 0.009 tapered guide wire, and this is the Fighter guide wire, and this is the Pilot 200, which is stiffer, it has 4.1 gram distal tip, and forms larger knuckles. One does not necessarily have to create an umbrella before inserting the guide wire into the microcatheter. Quite often, we'll put a small 1 mm 30 degree CTO bend to the wire. And then, uh, in this way, um, sometimes the guide wire will actually cross into the distal true lumen. But once there is difficulty creating a knuckle through this configuration, one can uh, create an umbrella handle before that facilitates creation of the knuckle within the vessel. Similar with the cross boss, the first step is to advance the microcatheter to the subintimal space. Then the guide wire is pushed. It's critically to, to not rotate to avoid fracture of the wire until the knuckle the, is formed. Then one keeps on advancing using orthogonal views and there are different outcomes similar to the cross pos. One is that the guide wire goes into the side branch, inside the lesion, distal subminimal space, or sometimes it re-enters into the distal true lumen. Once again, if the re-entry is very distally, that's usually not desirable because of high rates of restenosis. Essentially, this is the start technique described by Antonio Colombo. This is the first scenario that the guide wire is in the side branch. This is very similar to what was seen with the cross pos. The key part is to realize this, and that's where the orthogonal views are key, and then uh, pull it back and redirect uh, or use a stiffer wire to redirect. If the knuckle stays inside the lesion, then the options are to change for a different guide wire, for example, going from a fielder XT to a pilot, use the crossbows, increase the support, or use a different microcatheter. 
And lastly, potentially do the Carolino technique in which a small amount, half to one cc of contrast, is injected to create a micro dissection and facilitate crossing. The third option is uh, the wire to go subintimally distal to the distal cap. It's important to not let the wire go way distally, but uh, stop it just distal to the distal cap so the dissection area is minimized. The most common solution for this is to use a stingray system for the entry. There are wire-based entries or if everything fails going retrograde, but in most cases using stingray is the preferred approach to this. And finally, there is the option of the guide wire entering the distal true lumen. However, if that happens very distally, this is not optimal because of the higher stenosis rates and should be avoided. If it happens very close to the distal cap without affecting any major branch, then it is, it is fine. In case of the star technique, distal reentry, sometimes we do the so-called investment technique in which balloon inflations are down throughout the vessel, but no stents are placed, and then uh, the patient comes back in two to three months, and at the time there is usually a channel that can be wired and stented. If um, uh, there is an intentional re-entry distally, the options are to either come back and use the stingray to re-enter more proximally, or if this is not possible, use the a balloon inflation as discussed before, and essentially um, do the investment technique in which uh, there's flow going under grade and the patient returns. How about re-entry? Uh, re this is most commonly done using the stingray system over the guide wire based techniques. And the Stingray consists of a Stingray balloon and a Stingray guide wire. The Stingray balloon is a balloon that is flat when inflated, so self oriented with one surface facing the true lumen and the other surface facing the adventitia, and has two exit ports, one facing one direction and the other facing the other direction. The Stingray guide wire is a very stiff wire like the Confianza with a distal prong at the tip. This is advanced over the two exit ports until it finds the port that faces the distal true lumen. St preparing the Stingray balloon is important to optimize visualization. The first step is to uh, pull negative with a dry 20cc syringe. Then 100% uh, contrast is um, used to uh, fill the balloon so it becomes more opaque. Then the balloon is advanced to the re-entry zone. The best way to do this is using a Miracle 12 guide wire that is stiff and provides good support. Sometimes it can be difficult to deliver the Stingray balloon, and uh, solutions for this are to predilate the subintimal space with a small 1.0 to 1.5 millimeter balloon or increase the support, or sometimes if the Stingray has been damaged to use a new Stingray balloon. The classic way to um, do the stingray is a so-called stick and drive technique in which the stingray is advanced distal to the distal cap. Then views are obtained trying to make the stingray balloon look like a single line, exactly like this, versus the railroad track appearance, because that means that we're looking at the balloon and fast versus from the side. This is the preferred view because that means one surface is going to face to one direction and the other the other direction. So once you have selected this optimal view, then uh, the next step is to advance a guide wire. In addition to the Stingray wire, several others can be used, such as the Gaia, the Astato, the Hornet, and the Confianza Pro 12. And the wire is advanced, aiming for the direction that faces into the distal true lumen. If it faces Adventitia, the wire is withdrawn and then advanced the one exit port is between the two markers of the Stingray balloon and the other exit port is proximal to the proximal marker. The next step is to confirm the guided wire is indeed into the distal true lumen with contralateral injection, followed by advancement and static. However, one of the challenges using stiff wires is that they can cause dissection or go through and through, and that is why in the majority of cases the stick and swap technique is currently being done. The basic principle is um, advancing the Stingray balloon, and then a stiff guide wire is advanced to create an exit port. Then this is removed, and a polymer jacketed wire, typically a Pilot 200, is advanced 
to find the dual lumen and advance distally without causing dissections or other problems. A variation of this is the so-called double blind stick and swap technique, in which uh, there is advancement of the wire on both sides of this stingray balloon until uh, the true lumen is selected. And this is an example of the double blind stick and swap. The wire is advanced over the one area, doesn't face the distal true lumen, is withdrawn, advanced again, and eventually the true lumen is selected. So here it was the false lumen, now we're going proximal to the proximal marker, advance, and eventually finding entry into the distal true lumen. Sometimes dissection reentry can cause subintimal hematoma, and the problem with this is that it compresses the distal true lumen, making it very hard to re-enter. One solution is to do the straw technique, or subintimal transcatheter withdrawal, in which a balloon is used to aspirate and decompress the hematoma, re-expanding the vessel and making a better target for re-entry. Re-entry can be done with, um, without using the stingray. This is an example of the Carlino technique, in which the microcatheter is advanced at the subintimal space. Then a small amount of contrast, half to one cc, is injected that dissects either subintimal space, and then a wire is advanced into the space created by the contrast injection, followed by re-entry into the distal true lumen, usually using the stingray balloon. This is the modified micro-injection technique or the Carlino technique. This is an example of this technique. Um, the patient had an LAD CTO. We were stuck in the subintimal space, could not advance the guide wire more distally. And then a small amount of contrast was injected you, through the microcatheter. You see the subintimal space fill. After doing this, um, there was still no significant undergrade flow. However, then advancing a, another pilot 200 guide wire, the guide wire successfully crossed into the distal true lumen. Therefore, the Carlino technique modified the distal cap and allowed guide wire crossing into the distal true lumen. The STAR technique, described by Dario Colombo, is advancing the knuckled wire all the way until it spontaneously re-enters into the distal true lumen. This is an example of a patient in whom a subintimal crossing was achieved. Stingray was used in an attempt to re-enter, however, the wire kept on being in the subintimal space. Eventually, after multiple attempts, a knuckled was formed with a polymer jacketed wire. And uh, after multiple um, balloon inflations, there was some undergrade flow restored. However, the flow, um, uh, the distal position was not uh, into the true lumen, therefore, no stents were placed. The patient came back three months later, and now we do have a good undergrade flow into the weight, into the distal right coronary artery. This was a good investment technique. It was very easy to now advance a workhorse guide wire, distal true lumen and then placed stents. People sometimes ask why, need, why do they need to know undergrade is sexual re-entry, and the reason is that these techniques are important for achieving success, especially in more complex lesions. This is a JCTO score from the Progress Registry, showing that with increasing score, then there is much higher need for using the retrograde approach in green or undergrade is sexual re-entry in red. And the same can be seen from the overall progress CTO in more than 3,000 cases. Although in half the cases the wire escalation will work, in approximately a quarter of cases each, the retrograde or undergrade dissection reentry are going to be the final successful strategies. And although there have been some concerns about higher stenosis rate using dissection reentry techniques, this applies essentially to the extensive dissection reentry techniques, that's the STAR technique, whereas the limited uh, re-entry techniques, the stingray re-entry essentially, had much more favorable risk for stenosis, even though they were used in more complex cases. Last but not least, the undergrade dissection re-entry techniques can be extremely useful even in non-CTO intervention. This is an example of a right coronary PCI that was complicated by wire loss, dissection, and uh, acute vessel closure. The wire could not be re-advanced into the true lumen, however, a wire was advanced subintimally. The stingray was used to re-enter into the distal true lumen, and then the vessel was standard, successfully restoring undergrade flow 
and providing a solution to this complication. So in summary, like every other CTO technique, it is important for undergraded sex reentry to have a systematic step-by-step -step approach, troubleshooting any issues that may arise. For reentry, the Stingray system remains the mainstay as it provides the more accurate uh, reentry, minimizing the dissection length. The technique for reentry is currently in most cases the stick and swap or the double blind stick and swap with the store technique being useful for decompressing hematoma. And finally, like every other part of CTO, it is important to have uh, troubleshooting and mini algorithms to achieve final success. Thank you.